I'm David Muramoto. I'm the grandson of Frank Muramoto. Um, I got to know my grandfather for a very short period of time. I was probably three years old when he passed away. But I know from his history that he was an outgoing man. I would have loved to have talked to him so much more because he clearly was he clearly was beyond the usual uh, immigrant coming to the United States in terms of his scope of where he was willing to go, what he was willing to do, and, and just the courage to go on to a new country and reinvent himself because he certainly did all that. It seems like amazing that he was so well traveled uh, in a relatively short period of time. And we know from his photographic career, he traveled every place in southern Colorado. And I think it looks like uh, from some of the evidence that he probably went into New Mexico, he came down to Denver. But he went an awful lot of places, but he wanted to live in Pueblo. That was his home. He was the type of man, I'm sure, he would uh, come home one day and say, oh, honey, I." Um, put on a few extra uh, hot dogs on the grill or whatever it might be. I've got uh, 10 of my uh, friends over here to uh, entertain. It, it speaks uh, volumes about, you know, really both of them. And, and I really have a lot of sympathy for my grandmother because I know she probably put up with an awful lot of stuff. It's pretty apparent from all of the photographs that my grandfather was willing to take pictures of anybody and everybody and as far as going to different communities whether it was a black baptist group whether it was a native indian tribe gathering whether it was uh, japanese american immigrants he was willing to take picture of everybody and anybody well photography is really a pretty well-established profession now. Back in the day, it was a rapidly evolving, technologically advanced practice. So not only was he willing to come to the United States and, and try some different occupations, he also said, what can I do to really make a living? Where can I have an impact? And he recognized he had an eye for photography. He had the artistic sense for putting everything together. So he went to school and, and then went on to his, his career documenting Southern Colorado's diversity, outgoing uh, and uh, well-traveled, and I guess courageous, I, I'd have to say. I, I suppose all immigrants have to have a certain amount of courage and he started with glass negatives. That's the level of technology when he first started and progressed from there. It sure seems to me that uh, Duke really looked at every new technology that came out. He was a early adopter of new technology that came out. I'm sure he tried it uh, with his family, with rapidly said, oh, this, is, this will work and I can uh, take these pictures and you know people probably valued color pictures that's that's got to be a uh, important step for a photographer and I think that was his way of saying I've got to develop some of these things and try them out so what better way to do it than you know take the family out or he just used it as an experiment and he just saw how the equipment worked, whether it would work, and uh, he was willing to experiment with those things. He, he definitely was not someone who was ever pigeonholed into using one form of technology and just saying, oh, that's good enough, I can. He was really willing to go out and say, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to, to do much more with, uh, my, with my art. Uh, than just stick with one form. And so that kind of shows throughout his career. Uh, if you look at the early forms of photography, 
on uh, especially on the glass negatives that's kind of amazing that he was able to get some of the exposures he got all the way through color photography and moving into different types of uh, models and types of film as uh, Kodak and other companies developed it. He was a little bit larger than life in some ways. From the um, shots of different parts of Colorado, I'm sure he, he kept busy. He, he went all around to different places uh, during his career. And I, I think more than that, I think he really enjoyed it. I, I really, I don't think you do that unless you have some love of travel. And, you know, I, I know my grandfather did a lot of things and uh, with the state fair, in other words, he, he went down and not only did the family participate in them, he also went down and uh, took uh, photographs of, uh, of these parades down Main Street, it looks like. But he certainly tried to get a lot of the social events of, uh, of that time on film. He, he certainly did an awful lot of different things. So he was asked to take some photos off in the, while they had a picnic. That's one thing that I, I seem to see a lot is that he, he was invited to a lot of social gatherings. And I, I would think also in some cases, people couldn't afford to have their portraits done, but if you had the whole family or the extended family there, they would uh, all get their pictures taken and that was good enough for them. He had an eye for looking at the natural vistas of Colorado. I, I think that's a theme that really kind of showed his, his love of Colorado, and in, in particular, Southern Colorado, the, the majesty of it all. I wonder what he would say, you know, knowing that his, his grandchildren uh, and great-grandchildren are, are still here. We still love being here. Again, beyond taking... Um, photos of people, he also loved taking these, these grand sweeping shots and uh, liked being able to portray it, but I think it was probably difficult with, these are all photos that any of us who've been to Mesa Verde at some point could uh, identify with and, and uh, recognize. This is my grandfather's house in Pueblo on Tijon Street. Yeah, and uh, I even remember um, this particular part of the house. Uh, my, my sister, who's two years younger than I am, uh, and I used to play in, in, at that house, and I always remember downstairs to their cellar was the spookiest place you could ever imagine. And Reverend Shingeta tending his gardens, also a few shots of his miniature trees. That's kind of amazing to think of a small Zen garden out in, the, out in his backyard. Strongman performing exercises. <laughs> Demonstration of a series of gymnastics exercises by Kitahada. Now, who was Kitahada? I have no idea, but what a hairstyle. Oh, and there's my, my grandfather steps in and he can't quite lift. Film was not cheap uh, back in the day. And yet he seemed to have enough to say, all right, let's, let's get some uh, just normal people having some recreation. And I think he also found it interesting to uh, show, oh, and this, this is just showing what will the highway in the future look like. Now, it was through his personality, through he was outgoing, that he wanted to, to see these things. And, but you could tell just by his personality that he was uh, someone who had, must have had a great deal of energy and must have been willing to, you know, just go up and say, hi, my, my name is Frank, uh, and, you know, this is what I'm doing. So he must have had that rare ability to not only do that, but try new technology, but assimilate it pretty quickly and then use it. Those sorts of things are, are not not that commonly found, even in, you know, in modern times. He, he was an extraordinary person.